Okay, there's a lot of new important news you absolutely need to be aware of that occurred over the past seven days. First, the Biden administration advised a second booster for the public ahead of the FDA approving it. And then second, an Omicron-specific booster failed in vivo or in animal trials, essentially. It only increased antibodies marginally. And third, new UK data revealed booster effectiveness plummeting to 45% after only 14 weeks against the new Omicron BA2 variant. So in this video, we'll go over all the important science of the previously mentioned headlines, and I've organized those into a few Substack posts for you. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right-hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come up. Also, click my social links in the description if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. You really need to check out my new Substack posts on the topics we're about to go over. You can find sources and specific details there, so I'll post the links in the description below. But first, let me pull up my most recent Substack post. Hold on one second. Okay, as you can see, Biden advises a second booster ahead of FDA approval. My goodness, <laughs> this is a huge problem. Now let me scroll down a little more here. Now, if you look at the underlying text here, it basically explains how the Biden administration back last year announced the first booster dose for the public ahead of the FDA approving it. And that puts such a strain on the FDA that two senior vaccine regulators at the agency, specifically the director and deputy director of vaccine research and review, resigned. The reason they cited was, and let me scroll down a little more here first, well, they said there wasn't enough data to support approving the boosters, yet the White House announced the plan to roll out the boosters, which put unethical and political pressure on the two FDA heads to quickly approve those vaccines. Now, fast forward to this month, both Moderna and Pfizer submitted another EUA application for approval to give a second booster dose. Pfizer looking for an approval to give the booster dose to those 65 plus, and Moderna, everyone 18 plus, both with no randomized control trial data. In other words, neither company ran a randomized control trial to see if their vaccines would hit primary or secondary endpoints like reduced hospitalization, death, or even antibody titers. Instead, and let me pull this up, hold on one second, in lieu of running the trials to see if their vaccines were effective in the age groups they were targeting, both Pfizer and Moderna submitted or cited Israeli data instead to justify their booster doses. That's just crazy to me. In the worst part, the data was predominantly applicable to those 65 or 70 plus, I should say. That's bad because submitting data to get your product approved for one age group doesn't mean it's effective for another. Pfizer and Moderna should have run their own independent trials specifically for this occasion. That is how things are done historically. Sadly, even with all that, the FDA is going ahead with reviewing those applications and this is why people have little trust in public health right now. Okay, now let's hop back to the Israeli data Moderna and Pfizer are using to support their second booster approval. You see, the additional dose shows only a transient effect in protection or a short-lived effect over three months, which which is a great segue to the next topic actually, um, that being waning booster effectiveness. Let me pull up this UK data here real quickly, which is on my other Substack post, one second. So as you can see, booster effectiveness drops to 45% after only a few months against the new Omicron BA2 variant. Now, I feel a lot of my colleagues don't want to talk about the next thing I'm about to mention because they're scared to be labeled as anti-vax, but this has nothing to do with being anti-vax. And that is, at this point, most people on this planet have had either a symptomatic or an asymptomatic run with multiple COVID variants and also exposure to vaccines. That means most people were likely exposed to every variant which conferred some degree of immunity, whether infected individuals realized they had symptoms or not. And that means, and I'm going to spell it out, what gives you more robust immunity? Exposure to a virus and multiple variants four to five times or exposure to a small mRNA sequence within a vaccine, which is like 3% of the virus, and mind you, is from the original Wuhan strain. The vaccines have never been upgraded to target new variants, and that's exactly why you're seeing waning vaccine efficacy right now. In other words, a vaccine, even against the original variant, will still generate antibodies, but those antibodies will not wreck 
recognize the new variant as well. And I feel this is a huge problem because most people realize this and they're losing trust in public health. And we don't want that. Anyways, let me pull up my next Substack post one second. Okay, now the Omicron specific booster given in vivo, it failed. It generated a very low antibody response compared to a Moderna booster. Now to elaborate on that, neutralizing antibodies for the Omicron specific booster were in the 2000 range while the ID50 was just shy of 2000. And sadly, those results were three times less potent than the Moderna booster targeting the original strain. Oh, the irony of this. So what does all of this mean? First, we need to consider changing our public health approach as vaccine effectiveness seems to remain transient and low in many new studies. So considering that, we have to reevaluate the risks of such an intervention against the rewards. I feel the hype around mRNA technology was that it could be upgraded to target emerging variants or new variants. So why hasn't this happened? And anyways, that Omicron specific mRNA booster we just talked about failed during an NV study. So people are seeing all that, the hasty and clearly politically driven approval of boosters, dwindling and transient vaccine effectiveness, and they're losing faith in public health. And that's tragic because people should be able to look at public health agencies and at least somewhat trust their guidance. And sadly, that is not happening now. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data and we'll continue to collect it as the days and years and months go on. But if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.